Hey, the two gay reefers. Hey Reefers, today we're talking about our Red Sea Reefer. As you know, late last year we took it down and transferred everything over to Reefzilla. What's it been doing since then? Not a lot. <laughs> Not a lot, basically. <laughs> uh, we moved it to the other side of the room as part of the uh, changeover process. And it sat there, once we emptied it, it just sat there. And didn't do much for probably three or four months. Didn't even get a clean. No. Because we were bad. We're bad reefers when it comes to things like that. Yeah, but we were concentrating on reef sealer, so, you know, trade offs. That's it, that's <laughs> it. Did finally get around to cleaning it. And here's a flashback here. Flashback. Alright, guys, today we are cleaning out the Red Sea Reefer uh, using cheap vinegar from Coles, a loofah, exfoliating glove. Give it a bit of a clean first, then I'm gonna fill it up with uh, fresh water. Let the system run for, for a couple of days and then give it another clean in a few days time. So, enjoy! Everything's running, I've got the skimmer running, I've got the Vortec running and the return pumps running, so everything seems to be running sweet. So I'm going to put a whole bottle of vinegar into the system now uh, to start the cleaning process. I've got my return pump running pretty strong, my uh, Ecotec MP10 is running pretty strong as well, and so is the, uh, the skimmer. Uh, not that there's anything for the system to skim, but I just want to get some water running through it to get it all clean. So, everything looks to be okay, we've got no leaks, which is good. That's basically all we're going to do for now. Uh, we'll give it a couple of days just to run through, we'll then empty it again, give it a scrape down, give it a good clean, uh, and then hopefully we'll be ready to start looking at uh, filling it with salt water. Looking forward to it. End of flashback. We started on its next step in its journey, which was to become our quarantine tank for Reefzilla. Just a temporary measure uh, until we build it up as a proper tank again in the future. A uh, Red Sea Reef is a bit of an overkill for a uh, quarantine, quarantine tank. tank. But it's the tank, we, so. it's the tank we have at the moment and we are wanting to put more fish into Reefzilla. First of all, we had to fill it. So filling it consisted of using our new pump from our IBC downstairs and filling it up with natural salt water. We put some sand in the bottom of it. We don't like bare bottom quarantine tanks. We're not a big fan of that. The sand w sand in this case was particularly dirty as well. Yeah, we just, so sort, of, just sort of dumped it in. and it went, Didn't wash it. it. It made a nice soupy looking mix. <laughs> <laughs> so once that settled, uh, I think that took about two days or so. Then we started on the Dr. Tim's one and only nitrifying bacteria. Is that right? That is right. I got it right. You got it right. <laughs> uh, that process probably took about two and a half maybe three weeks to go through the whole cycle process yeah it um, went through pretty quickly because we got the ammonia from when we originally set up the Red Sea Reefer so this is talking back in 2016 uh, it was the older ammonia I think and we followed the new ammonia instructions which meant we halfway through we overdosed on yeah, ammonia <laughs> overdosed a little bit so uh, the ammonia was sort of dropped a bit and then it spiked and then stayed there for and a then stayed bit. there for a little bit but then it dropped but then the nitrite spiked and that stayed up for probably three or four days longer than it should have. Yeah. Uh, so but, but eventually it all came down to uh, very close to, well, ammonia was zero, nitrite was zero, nitrate was still a little bit high, but it wasn't too bad. Once we completed the cycle, we did uh, pretty much a 20%, 20 to 30% water no, about change. 50%. I have 50% water change. <laughs> yeah, pretty big water change, yeah. 50% uh, of the display section, but we didn't touch the sump. So, whatever that works out to be. Yeah, I mean, we're a bit blasé with how much we do for water changes now because we have an IBC downstairs. Uh, and thousand litres downstairs, worry about it when it runs out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Then it was on to looking at new fish choices for the new tank. So, we've done a lot of research on the fish that we wanted. Um, We've actually had a couple of fish on hold at different fish shops around the place for quite a while. Uh, thank you to the guys at Gallery Aquatica and Fur and Nick Vins. and Fern Vins uh, for holding those fish for us. We really, really appreciate it uh, and being patient with us while we got everything up and running with Reefzilla and then got this, the uh, Red Sea up and then got it cycled. So it was some of those fish were sitting in their uh, system for quite a while. So Maybe thank you so much. Six to eight weeks, yeah. nine weeks, 10 weeks, something like that. <laughs> with the new additions to Reefzilla, we're going a little bit controversial, a bit outside the norm. We're not sticking with strictly reef safe fish. 
because reef safe is quite a big term and doesn't really mean anything anymore is what I found. It's just like you say, oh, it's not reef safe. Well, what does it eat? I don't know, it's just not reef safe. So we've already got a Harlequin Tusk, so Diego, he makes it pretty much impossible to have snails, any crustaceans, anything like that. And same, any with, that, same with our rashes as well. They pretty much will eat anything that goes in there that they could possibly get their mouth over. Even if they can't get their mouth over, they'll still give it a good go. So we're Mutley. looking, <laughs> yeah, good old Mutley. <laughs> Insert Mutley here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking more at fish that we want to keep that aren't necessarily traditionally reef safe and are sort of more along the lines that will eat certain things that we can avoid. So first up we looked at was a trigger fish. So we've always loved trigger fish just for their different fish shape and the way they swim is quite unique as well. And they've got real, real personalities of fish as fish. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, they tend to come towards you and nip you when you put your hands in the tank, but So yeah, introducing Mr. Pinky. <laughs> so we first saw this fish when we went to SeaWorld uh, in the big reef tank, and he was quite striking with a dark sort of body, the w brilliant white uh, fins, and then of course the pink tail, which gives him his name. So Mr. Pinky's the first one that we're putting in the tank. And he arrived at Gallery Aquatica, he was at... So he was a rehome. Yes. So we knew he was tank hardy, we knew he was, pretty friendly, didn't have any diseases already, um, so into the quarantine he went. Definitely uh, ate like a trooper every single night, just packing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've never seen a fish eat so much. <laughs> thought, we thought like... bugs ate, ate, ate fast, uh, yeah, nothing like it. Nah. We wanted some sort of signature fish, some sort of statement fish, something that was bold, bright and out there because at the moment we had a lot of black fish, white fish, yellow fish or a combination of all three. So there was a lot of black and white in our tank. So we wanted something that would really stand out. And after going to see Thomas's tank earlier this year and how many angel Check fish he had. Part up here. You just fall in love with angels. You can't not fall in love with angels after they seeing that tank. They are looking fish. And as you know, angels are prone to eating coral. So we did a bit of research and I found that out of the biggest sort of angels that you can get, the majestic is known to be more on the peaceful side, won't sort of go nipping too much at coral. From the research we were doing, probably more so Darren was doing and telling me about it, uh, they seem to only seem to want to nip at corals that aren't doing too well. Um, so when they start producing the mucus. Yeah, so, so corals that are sick sort of get a slime coating and that's what they tend to pick up more than actual the cop. The actual coral itself. Yeah, that's what he's trying to say. <laughs> uh, so obviously our aim is to keep all of our corals looking nice and healthy. If a coral isn't looking healthy and we lose it, then that's a risk we take. It's, yeah. um, you know, we're prepared for that risk up front. Uh, we know there may be some corals we're gonna have to either remove from the tank completely or we will just lose because they get eaten. That happens. Uh, then we'll just mold Reefzilla to, to suit the, the fish, fish we, we have. have. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. right. So introducing Madge, Madge. the Majestic. So the surprise pickup and our last fish in quarantine at the moment. But we did do our research about it beforehand. It was a fish we wanted to buy. Yes, before yeah. anyone complains. <laughs> Is Nibbler the box fish. Spotted box fish, I should say. We're standing on the other side of the shop and we both sort of looked across at the tank at the same time and went <gasps> Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Pretty much what happened, we both ran across had a look at it and yay. Fell in, fell in love. love. <laughs> He's so cute. He's so tiny. He's so <laughs> tiny and he just motors around in little circles. He just like scoots around. It's so cute watching him swim. Yep. 
A lot of people said that you can't have a, a box fish in a tank with a lot of flow. Uh, we've got the MP10 running pretty full on in the quarantine tank. It doesn't affect him. No problems no whatsoever. No problems whatsoever. So I'm sure he'll be fine within the uh, in reef sealer. In reef sealer. But obviously the other thing with box fish is a lot of people say that if they die, they'll nuke the whole tank. But I haven't found a lot of evidence in recent times, like I'm saying in the last 10, 15 years, I can't find stories of people actually firsthand saying that this has happened to their tank and it was because of the box fish. Yeah, and we always keep a close eye on our fish. We look at, look at the tank every morning, you know, a couple of times in the morning, every afternoon when we get home from work, but we're always looking at the tank. It's just, it's it's part of our living room. It's part of our house. It's, yeah. You know, if we saw that he was not looking well, we'd probably take him out of the tank and put him somewhere uh, in quarantine for a little while. You know, yeah, like, so. he's so damn cute. How can you say no? Yeah, basically. He's so cute. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> we have the trigger fish, the majestic angel, and the box fish. So, all up, it's an interesting mix of fish to be putting into Reefzilla. And obviously, we'll keep you updated on how they fare in that tank. That's it. But anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have... Like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, be excellent to each other and keep it salty, everyone. Bye for now. See you guys. Oh. <laughs>